Hey, what's up, gentlemen? Chris here with Elite Level Leader. In this episode of Business and Barbells, we're gonna start right here on the battleground where I will demonstrate a fitness training tip and a workout. Next, we'll head over to the boardroom where I will reveal a business building strategy and growth plan. So let's get started right now. Hey, what's up gentlemen? Chris here with Elite Level Leader and welcome to the Battleground. In today's workout, I've got a four round total body workout for you and it's gonna start off with eight dumbbell hang clean and presses on the right arm and then we're gonna go over to the left arm but first, let's go through the movements. So I'm gonna head back here and grab a single dumbbell for this. Now we're gonna end up doing eight hang clean and press on just the right arm. So first off, I'm gonna set the dumbbell down. Now the hang clean and press, we've done this in a couple other workouts before. The hang clean and press, he starts from that hang position. So your hand or the dumbbell is down next to your hips. From here, we're gonna bring it into a clean position and then we're simply gonna press it up overhead. Then we're gonna bring it back down. Always starts from that hang position, which is right around your hip area. So what you wanna do first, we're not just doing a curl with this to get it into that clean position. What we're doing is we're hinging at the hips, we're slightly bending in the knee Knees here, knees are tracking out over those toes, so you're kind of in a little bit of a mini squat here with your chest up. Now from here, you have the dumbbell, in this instance, is gonna be in your right hand to start with. So from here, what you're gonna do is explode, send those knees back, open up those hips. What that is gonna do is it's gonna start to bring that dumbbell up because that momentum, that power of you opening that hips is gonna start to bring that dumbbell up off the ground. Now from here, you're gonna shrug your shoulder. So once you get to here, now you can even get up on your toes and shrug your shoulder even more. So that dumbbell is starting to come up. Once it starts to come up, now you start to pull, keeping it close to your body. We're not sending it out like a bicep curl. Keeping it close to your body. Now from here, as you start to pull, now you're gonna get underneath it and you're gonna bring it up into that front rack position. Now from here, you're gonna see I'm back into that little mini squat because I got underneath that dumbbell. Now from here, all I have to do is bring those knees back, open up those hips again, and press it all the way up overhead. Then bring it down to that hang, hang position again and keep on doing those for a set of eight. So first off, we grab this dumbbell. Nice squat stance, feet are a little bit wider than hip width apart or about hip width apart. So chest is up, shoulders back, palms is facing my hip, dumbbell is in my right hand. Send those hips back. Knees are tracking out over those toes. I'm in this little mini squat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explode. Then I'm gonna bring that dumbbell up, get in that hang position here. And then I'm going to get underneath that dumbbell so I'm ready to do a push press all the way up. So from here, open up those hips, get underneath it. Now from here, I have this hand out here just to kind of create some balance here. Now I'm in that mini squat again. Now I can just press it up overhead. So back down, hang position, clean it up. Press, then back down, clean it up and press. You can do eight of these hang clean and press on the right side. Now, once you've done eight on that right side, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna switch off and we're gonna do eight on the left side. So th same thing we were doing before, just on the left side. After you complete eight of those, now what we're gonna do is 10 dumbbell overhead front forward lunges on the right side. Once again, we're doing right side first, then left side. Now we're doing overhead forward lunges. So first off, we have to get this dumbbell up in an overhead position. From here, then we're gonna lunge forward. If the dumbbell is in your right hand, you're lunging forward with your right leg, and then back and all the way down. We're gonna do 10 on the right and then 10 on the left. By starting with the right here, we first have to get this dumbbell up overhead. A couple different ways you can do that. You can simply squat down, bring it up, and use that clean technique we had done before, the hand clean, to clean it up and then press it up. So now you're in this position. You can also snatch it from this position, which would be feet a little bit wider than hip width apart here. You bend back, snatch this dumbbell up into this front uh, overhead position here. Now, when you have this dumbbell in this overhead position, you wanna make sure that everything is stacked nicely. So wrist, elbows, shoulder, all in a line here. So everything's stacked nicely here. We don't want that dumbbell going out in front or behind. Also, keep that bicep really close to your ear. We don't want this dumbbell flailing off to the side or up over the top of your head. So really engage your tricep and your lats and your traps to keep that dumbbell up overhead. Once you have this dumbbell up into this overhead position, like I said, if it's in your right hand, you are then going to lunge forward with your right leg. Then you come all the way up and you're just gonna do a set of 10 of these overhead lunges. Once you've completed 10 of those, then you're gonna switch off to the left side. You're gonna do 10 on that left side, dumbbell in the left hand, lunging forward with that left leg. A couple things I wanna go over in the lunges. So first off, 
I had mentioned before, keeping that bicep close to your ear, engaging your tricep, everything is stacked nicely. Now, engage your lats, everything in there. Now, what's gonna happen is when you lunge forward, the, the momentum is gonna wanna swing this dumbbell back and forth. So that's why I might make sure you are engaging your tricep, your lats, your traps, everything to make sure that that's not happening. Also, when you go into this lunge, what's gonna happen is it's gonna wanna pull you forward. So, keep that chest up, shoulders back the entire time, so your torso is straight up and down, just like this. Now, another thing on the lunges, make sure you're not short stepping it. What I mean by that is make sure you're stepping far enough out that when you are in this lunge, you have a nice 90 degree angle on this front leg here. What happens is if you short step it and you go into this lunge, what's gonna happen is this knee goes out way over the top of your toe, your heel comes off the ground, puts a lot of extra added strain on your knee and your ankle, and you just don't have as good balance either. So make sure you are stepping out far enough and you're not short stepping that. All right guys, after you've completed the overhead lunges on both the right and the left side, now we're gonna work the core, now we're gonna work the abs, and we're gonna do 18 seated in and outs. A couple different ways you can do this. First way you can do it is just simply right here on the floor. So go ahead, sit here on the floor. Now you're gonna have your feet together, knees together. What's gonna happen is you're gonna put your hands on your sides, just, around, just behind your butt. You're gonna lean back about 45 degrees. From here, you're gonna pull your feet up off the ground, your heels off off the ground, and we're just gonna pull the knees into the chest and then kick them all the way straight out. So this is a seated in and out, really engaging that core, engaging those abs. You're gonna do a set of 18 of these. Now to in kind of enhance this even more. If you have a bench, you could do them on a bench. This allows you to get a little bit more uh, range of motion on the seated in and outs. You can grab the sides of the bench. So from here, I'm seating, leaning back about 45 degrees, but I can bring my feet down farther because the floor is not in the way. From here, now I can really engage and open up those core, or open up that core and those abs at the top and really get a further range of motion and engage those abs. So that's the two different options you can do for that. If you have a bench or a chair or something, I highly recommend doing that. If not, you can just go ahead and do those 18 seated in and outs on the floor. Then after you've completed those, you're gonna go ahead and rest for one minute. That completes one round of this workout. And like I said, guys, we're gonna end up doing a total of four rounds today. All right, guys, that is the workout of the day. I'll see you right back here in the battleground for the next workout. And as always, guys, make sure you check out EliteLevelLeader.com for more training programs and to enlist today. Okay. Hey there, Chris McCarthy here with Brand Identified and Elite Level Leader. In this training session, you will learn how to avoid business failure point number eight, which is your brand architecture is misaligned. Brand architecture refers to the way a company structures and organizes its brands and sub-brands. Misaligned brand architecture can lead to confusion among customers and internal teams, causing inefficiencies in operations and a lack of clarity in messaging. This can result in a failure to reach target audience and missed opportunities to create brand loyalty. Companies that have a misaligned brand architecture often struggle to differentiate themselves from the competitors and can become diluted as a result. To avoid this failure point, businesses need to ensure that their brand architecture is aligned with their business strategy and the needs of their target customers. This requires a deep understanding of the brand's purpose, vision, mission, and values, as well as the competitive landscape and market trends. Here are some steps to help you get started. Number one, understand your brand ecosystem. Begin by gaining a deep understanding of your brand's ecosystem, including all your brands, sub-brands, and product lines. Number two, segmentation. Clearly define the roles and relationships of each of the brand and sub-brands. Determine whether they are master brands, sub-brands, endorsed brands, or standalone brands. Number three, Customer needs. Align your brand architecture with the needs and the preferences of your target customers. Consider how they perceive and interact with all of your brands. Number four, visual consistency. Ensure that each brand and sub-brand within your architecture maintains visual consistency, including logos, color schemes, and design elements. Number five, messaging consistency. Develop messaging guidelines that ensure a consistent brand story and tone of voice across all brands and sub-brands. Number six, employee training. 
Educate your internal teams about your brand architecture. Ensure that employees understand the roles and relationships between different brands to avoid internal misalignment. Number seven, assess brand portfolio. Periodically review your brand portfolio to identify redundancies and opportunities for streamlining. Consolidate brands if necessary. Number eight, customer feedback. Gather feedback from customers about their perception of your brand architecture. Use this information to make adjustments as necessary. Number nine, evaluate extensions. When considering brand extensions or new sub-brands, assess how they fit within your existing brand architecture and whether they align with your strategic goals. Number 10, brand consultants. Seek the guidance of brand strategy consultants who specialize in brand architecture. Their expertise can help ensure that your brand structure is well aligned with your objectives. Number 11, continuous monitoring. Brand architecture is not static. Regularly review and adapt your brand structure to align with evolving business goals and market dynamics. By proactively aligning your brand architecture with your business strategy and customer needs, you can create a cohesive and effective brand ecosystem that leverages the strengths of each brand and sub-brand. This alignment enhances brand clarity, improves customer understanding, and ultimately contributes to the long-term success and sustainability of your business. That is all for now. I'll see you back here in the boardroom for your next business training session. To continue, be sure to visit brandidentified.com and elitelevelleader.com to learn more about our services and complete training programs.